Everybody else was arrested. A lot of those January Sixers are still in prison for what Gavin McInnes calls the great meandering. I got a real kick out of that. It was not a riot. There were some windows broken and and, uh, someone took Nancy Pelosi's lecture, and it's true. But to call that a riot is a disservice to the uh, mostly peaceful riots that the Black Lives Matter movement spent so much energy doing. This was a meandering. Um, But that same Ray Epps, that's the name of him, um, is suing Tucker Carlson and Fox News for saying what uh, Representative Massey said. Here's the headline in the New York Times. Arizona man cited in conspiracy theories sues Fox News for defamation. Ray Epps, a two-time Trump voter, sure he is, says Tucker Carlson repeatedly and falsely named him as a covert government agent who incited the January 6 attacks. What do you make of this, Ben? Well, first of all, you know, let's briefly talk about Ray Epps. It strands credulity or it's it's hard to imagine someone caught more red-handed in, from the government's perspective, provoking an insurrection, a massive domestic terrorist attack, a dem- domestic terrorist attack that is on par, according to senior Democrats in America, with you know, the depths of the Civil War or Pearl Harbor or 9-11. This man is on camera screaming for people to do that two days in a row, including on January 6th. He's at the start, the very start of the breach. He's coordinating with people seemingly on the ground during that day. This is someone who I believe used to be the leader of the Oath Keepers in Arizona, and the Oath Keepers has been treated as tantamount to a domestic terrorist organization and had their members who participated in the Capitol riot or even you know, purportedly were coordinating the riot uh, subject to prosecution. So how in God's name is this person not pursued by a Justice Department that's pursued dozens of people truly for mulling around essentially inside the Capitol and then people who weren't at the Capitol, who has pursued you know, nonviolent offenders, people with no criminal records, people who didn't destroy anything, et cetera. And here, as you know it, you have a person who was there right when the breach occurred, who was clearly calling for this with his rhetoric on camera, who's affiliated with an organization that's been pursued, why isn't he pursued? And that has led to questions of, well, look, we know according to court filings and then according to reporting that there were substantial federal assets on the ground. And there's a question of were there just informants on the ground or were there actually agent provocateurs on the ground? And then you start getting into the issue of, okay, were cops provoking people? to try to further incite that riot. And this is cast as conspiracy, conspiracy theory and such. You know, this is MAGA extremists talking about false flag attacks and such. But to the extent there's any conspiracy theory here, leaving aside the fact that we know that there were asset, that there were informants on the ground in court filings, and that we know, by the way, that many of the groups implicated in this were penetrated by government authorities historically set aside all of that, why won't government authorities give straight answers about whether and to what extent there were informants, other assets on the ground? What were they doing that day? Were they coordinating with people who engaged in violence or other acts of criminality that day, et cetera? And every single time these questions come up in congressional hearings, FBI officials, Justice Department officials, they stonewall. They stonewall time and time again. And so that will only fuel conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. The fact that Ray Epps himself, after all this time, has not been charged only further fuels conspiracy theories, particularly because it's not only that he hasn't been charged, but he is lauded by the likes of the January 6th committee. He's lauded by the New York Times and defended by those kinds of publications. Now, as for this filing against Fox News, there are, co- there are many interesting aspects of it. Uh, one of them I just point out off the top is that Epps is represented by a lawyer who's associated with David Brock, who's one of the Democrat hatchet men par excellence in America, which is kind of a curious thing because Epps in this filing is described as a two-time Trump voter, an avid Fox News watcher, I think a former Tucker Carlson fan, et cetera. I don't know any two-time Trump voting Tucker Carlson fans who would go about hiring the uh, those who are colleagues 
of ultimate Democrat hatchet men like David Brock. But OK, <laughs> set that aside for a moment. Interestingly, in this filing, he says that the DOJ contacted him and essentially said charges were forthcoming. Hmm. Now, I believe that this filing was from May. So we don't know yet whether charges have been filed, but by all by all appearances, they have not been filed. So are they forthcoming? What are those charges going to look like? As many observers have noted, including Revolver, by the way, and Revolver has done some of the best investigative work on who all the people were in these groups like Oath Keepers who were pursued, why some people were pu not pursued, which is very curious and leads to the question of, you know, were these uh, informants or other protected government assets that had infiltrated these groups? Set that aside for a moment. Revolver has a very good deep dive into the filing. And, you know, what they kind of point out is, can, can you, the question, and this is me paraphrasing here, but can you find anyone similarly situated to Ray Epps who has not been charged? Yeah. And then also, when the government pursues people, oftentimes they do it with these raids, these shock and awe SWAT team kind of raids. Ray Epps gets a call, essentially, and is told charges are likely forthcoming. Now, maybe those charges have been handed down. Maybe they will be handed down. Are those charges going to look like the charges for those who engage in similar acts? We don't yet know. Laughably, one of the things that Epps raises is that he's, he was likely to be charged because of the notoriety that Tucker Carlson gave him. So the implication there then is that Merrick Garland snaps to attention when Tucker Carlson covers Ray Epps, <laughs> who's on camera multiple times, who testifies before the J6 committee, et cetera. Very striking. And you know, in, in the Revolver piece, they go into kind of what are the legal angles here and what is the point of raising you know, Tucker Carlson's name in connection with this? Why go after Fox News and why go after Fox News right now? And they're all manner of interesting threads there. But Ray Epps presents the ultimate curious case in a scenario where the government is pursuing literally everyone and their mother and their grandmother and their grandfather mm -hmm. associated with January 6th. Yet this person who couldn't be caught more red handed in the way of calling for storming the Capitol and then being right there literally on the front line somehow seems to skate free. Mm -hmm.